Okay, so we got our set of instructions here. I'm going to create a function here. Um, and it's going to be the distances equals the dijkstra. Um, I have to give it a map and I have to give it a starting point. So like a lot of times we'll just start with like the first node or whatever, but it'd be nice if we had, um, what's it called? Um, if we had some flexibility and what's neat is actually there's, it takes almost no effort to make this flexible. Okay. So we're assuming that the map's already given, been given to us. So we want to have a map of distances, um, among n nodes. So we need to know how many nodes there are. So basically we would start off by asking for the length of the map. Um, we're going to initialize the distances to all the points as infinity. So distances, we're going to start them all off as infinity. So distances um, from 1 to n are all going to be infinity. All right, and we're going to mark all the nodes as unvisited. So uh, the way that we can do this is we can start by having something called visited, um, and we can say that it's going to be equal to 0. They have not yet been visited. Okay. And then initialize the distance to the first point as zero, or for the first, the starting point. So we'll say, all right, so the distances at the starting point is going to be zero. All right, so that's where we're starting this off. Okay, so um, basically the idea is, let's see, we have an unvisited node with the smallest distance value. Okay, so that means that we need to find it. Uh, there's Actually, it takes a couple more steps than we realize. So we have to find an unvisited node that has the smallest value. So first of all, we need to find all the unvisited nodes. So actually, I'm going to step this into two things. Find the unvisited nodes and then find the one with the smallest value. So that's something that we can do pretty straightforward whenever we're just doing it pencil and paper because we're humans capable of some kind of rational thought. Um, this is obviously going to need to go inside some kind of a loop here. I just haven't. So basically while something or other, I'm going to do all of this. Um, so I'm going to find all the unvisited nodes. I'm going to start, um, for lack of anything better to call them, I'm just going to call them candidates. Um, so they're potentially n candidates. Um, Okay, now before I get too far into this, there's like kind of a elegant way and a brute force way. I want to do it the brute force way first, just to kind of show you, because I think it's easier to understand, because again, it doesn't matter how pretty your code is if no one can tell what you're doing, unless your job is just like, or your, your aim in life is job security. So um, what I want to do is I want to find who's unvisited. So um, I'm going to set everything equal to infinity. Um, and then basically what I want to do is I want to check all of them and check and see if they're visited. So I'm going to go, um, my goal is also, in fact, I don't even know if I'm going to bother solving it the clever way, because if you solve it unclever, then that solution is more likely to be able to be used across different kind of programming languages. So there's ways that MATLAB is like kind of fun and you can avoid for loops. Um, but then if you do that, then you try to write the same code in C or something like that and it falls apart. I don't know why you're writing in C, but you never know. You might hate life. All right. So basically the idea is if it's visited um, or if it's not visited, I guess I should say, if it's not visited, then that is something that we care about. Um, so we'd want to keep track of what the distances are for that one. So it's kind of like whenever we were um, looking at everything that didn't have a check mark on it and um, then we found the one with the minimum value that didn't have a check mark. That's basically what we're doing now is um, we're going to find all of the distances um, that don't have a check mark and all the ones that do have a check mark are going to be called infinity. So basically the idea would be if you had, um, you know, some unvisited and visited, then your candidates would be like, Anything that's visited would be infinity. Anything that's not visited is going to be whatever number it is. And then anything that is visited is infinity again. So that means if you're trying to find the minimum that's not visited, that's going to come back as two. Okay. And then you would know, oh, okay. So that's the one I'm looking for. Um, I'm going to be working off of the fourth node now. And so that's kind of what we're doing is we're, um, when we're looking at trying to figure out where we're going to go, we're going to pre-label everything as infinity and then if it's not visited, then we'll put that number in there. So when we look for the minimum, we'll find it. So um, again, if it's not, then um, then we're good to go. 
All right, so what we now want to find is we want to find the minimum of all of those. Now, minimum in MATLAB has several um, outputs if you want to use them. So if I just ask for the min of candidates, it's going to tell me that the minimum is two, which is great. Um, but I also really need to know where that two occurs. So there's a couple of ways to do this in other languages. Um, the most elegant way to do it in MATLAB, and I don't think it's um, too crazy to understand, you can just ask for two outputs. So you can say, what is the min value thingy? And you can say the position thingy. And you can ask for two outputs, and then it's going to say, oh, the minimum value is two, and it occurs at position four. Um, so that's actually what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to say, I want to find the, um, the current distance. So the current distance that I'm going to start with. So like if I'm on, you know, node four, um, then anything I add that's attached to node four, I'm going to go two plus whatever all those distances are. So um, the current distance and then the current node or point or however you want to call it. So I'm going to find the min of candidates. Yay! Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save this because it's been a while. Save! Okay. So, uh, oh, we just did that. Find the one with the smallest distance value. I think we just did that. Yes. All right, done. Find the unvisited nodes. Find the one with the smallest distance value. Okay. Make this the current point and its distance the current distance. Oh, yeah. So we just did that too. Derp, 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 derp. Yay! Okay. Now, given the distance to the current point, which we have as current distance, update the distances to all its neighbors if the new distance will be smaller. So this should be thinking another stupid for loop that we need to go through all of the stuff again. So we're going to go force, again, some index going from 1 to n. Um, we want to kind of go through this. So the new distance would be the current distance. I don't know why I didn't do that. The new distance would be the current distance plus whatever the map says it would be to get from where I am, except I can't spell, um, to get from where I am to where I want to go. So I'm looking at the map now and I say, okay, so it took me two just to get to node four. Now where are all the places that we can go from node four and how much does it cost to get there? Okay, I will say, all right, so if that new distance is shorter um, than the current, than the distance that is in the distances matrix, does this make sense? Like if that's, so basically we're asking, do I need to go ahead and cross off? Is this number smaller? Can I cross it off? So then, um, so if the new distance is less than distances, distances of the index, then we're just going to update it. So distance at index is equal to the new distance. Sorry, something weird was happening there. All right. So, derp, 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 derps. so again, basically what it's doing is it's just saying, okay, if this number is smaller, distances, if this number is smaller, um, then we're going to replace it. And now you can actually add all kinds of um, stuff to this algorithm to check and see um, where you actually keep track of where it comes from. So you can actually include the information about the path. And that's totally a thing that's not too hard to throw in. I just don't feel like it. Okay, and then we want to mark the current node as visited. So we want to be able to say where we are right now um, is called the current point. And we want to make sure that that is now officially visited. Um, and I think we're mostly done. The only question that we have is this while something or other. So the question is, well, how do we know that we're done? Um, well, basically, we know we're done when everything is visited. Um, so over here, if you kind of think about this, once these all turn to ones, one, you know, you know, one and one, once these all turns to ones, then we're visited. So again, you kind of think, well, how do I know they're all ones? Well, if the sum of all of them is equal to the number of points. So if the sum of this is five and the number of points is five, then that means I'm officially done. So actually it's not, it's not too bad at all. I'm just gonna say, well, the sum of visited is less than this n value. So as long as there is um, at least one zero, then I just want to keep running this through over and over and over again. All right. And then the last thing that I'm going to want to do is, um, I'll just do this as an example, is I want to actually go throw in that graph that I was playing with over here and see um, if I'm getting the same answer. So I'm going to look at a blank version of the graph just because it's 
pretty. Um, so the way that you're going to want to create this map is um, you kind of think of ha having columns up here of like um, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, I guess. Ah, come here. I'm going to try to line them up all pretty. So like, and then the columns coming down are going to be A, B, C, D, E, F. So this would be like um, A to A, the distance between A and A is zero. Um, the distance between A and B is three. The distance between A and C is 11. The distance between A and D is 10. And then you got to think, well, what's the distance between A and E? Now, um, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, resist the urge to be like, oh, it's 10. Um, because it's not 10. Oh, I forgot that number there. I have to put that back in again. Um, yeah, so I'll do that. Um, so don't say it's 10 because you literally cannot get from A to E. Therefore, the distance between A and E is infinity. All right, the same thing. The distance from A to F is infinity. Um, then you need to go to the next line. And again, now we're going B to A. So this is a bidirectional graph, or it hasn't told us that it's unidirectional. Um, and so that means that B to A is also 3. B to B is also 0. B to itself is 0. B to C, you can't go B to C. So that means B to C is infinity. B to D is 4. I <laughs> just forgot to write it. Um, B to E is 7. And B to F is infinity. So I'm going to let you figure those rest of those. Okay. So um, some things to check to make sure you got it right. Um, lining them up really helps. But um, making sure you have a 0 along the diagonal. And again, since our directions or distances are the same in either direction, as you go along these diagonals, you should see them be symmetric. Okay. Um, but you can have maps that aren't. So let's see what we get. Um, so what I want to pull is I want to pull the distances. So I want to use my Dijkstra algorithm map, and I want to map everything to the first um, doohickey. And so I'll start this off with a CLC clear just so I'm doing a good job. All right, and it's thinking. Oh, no, this is a bad sign. So yeah, after a lot of cussing, I realized that I'm not going for my current point to n. I'm clearly going for my current point to my index. Oh my gosh. This is super, super, super fun. All right, I'm going to run this again and see what happens. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Look, it was just one stupid, um, and it was supposed to be an index. And let's see, let's make sure we're getting a 0, a 3, a 9, a 7, a 8, and an 11. And yes, that is exactly what I wanted it to be. So yay, it works. And, and basically the idea is if I wanted to find the shortest path between um, any other point and all the other points, I would just need to change that from a one to a two to, to whatever. Woohoo!